you see see how that tongue's out right there? That, uh, that his tongue is too big, so it's always he sleeps and his tongue hangs out of his mouth. Oh, what what's 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 your name? Leo, it's Leo. It's Leo. Hey, Leo. <laughs> Gorgeous. And then, and then you know uh, Sullivan, the uh, the golden that was the therapy dog. Oh. I think you did. You ever meet uh, Sullivan? He used to come. To, uh, she used to come to the workshop. A bigger dog. Yeah, it's a golden retriever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I remember. Yeah, By we, the we actually did a little series with. Uh, for only good news, called the Adventures of Sullivan the Therapy Dog, and it play it, it, every Christmas they play it. I'll send you a link to it. Oh, I'd love to see it. Yeah, I'd love to see it. Everybody, oh, I'm not even on here. I'm just talking. <laughs> Joey Travolta. <laughs> I love it. We uh, started differently yeah. today, but I saw your dog. I said I've got to turn the camera on. Yeah, that he's really. Uh, having the two dogs during this whole pandemic has just been a lifesaver to having these dogs. They're just, yeah. it's the best. It's the best. I tell you, I've been thinking of, uh, I've been thinking of getting one, but. Yeah, you, you have to get a rescue. Excuse me. I know he wants to go out now. Go yeah, yeah. on. Okay. Are you? Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, so how are you doing in the, uh, the year 2020? I'm good. It's, you know, it uh, was a great, uh, a great start to the year. We, as you know, uh, uh, we were promoting Carol of the Bells, the film that we all did together. Yes. And it was released um, March 6th. And then the pandemic happened on the 13th. So, right. uh, but I think, it's, you know, it's a great, uh, 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 with a lot of people being home now, it's it's a it's the perfect uh, feel good film if you're going to be stuck at home. So, oh yeah. Uh, so we've been pushing it. We uh, actually I'll send you uh, the new trailer. Uh, we added all the uh, quotes from the different reviews because we got quite a few really nice reviews. So, right. uh, so we made a whole new thing, and uh, uh, we're. Uh, talking with Lifetime and Hallmark, and oh. hopefully one of those stations will pick it up uh, for Christmas, and then we'll do a big push uh, DVD around Christmas time too. So, yeah, so, yeah, just okay. planning our next thing. I see Wendy Travolta's up there. That's my wife's name. Oh, I know. We should change that, huh? I'm, I'm yeah, I'm on a, uh, you might be able to do it in your posting. I think I can. Okay, yeah. we will take Joey. Jay. This is Wendy's computer. So. Rename. Ta da! <laughs> I'm still learning how I, to use well, it. You're better than myself. I am terrible at it. I'm terrible at it. But, well, uh, hey, but I'm learning. I'm learning. And you're on. Um, I just want, I wanted to thank you for, for hosting the Meet the Biz workshops for so many years, years ago. Oh, yeah. But three to five years, we, we did it out of Inclusion Films in Burbank. That's right. And you remember what I told you when, you when you asked how much does it cost? What did you say? I said, as long as you hire one of our students to work there, that's the fee. And you paid, the, you paid them yeah. to work there. Yeah. It's opportunities. You turn them into work. It's and and wonderful workers, wonderful, you know, and uh, uh, probably they're going to be hiring me someday soon. Uh, yeah, I know. I, I think one of the uh, uh, young men that uh, uh, men that work, worked with you. Uh, oh, God. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Will. Tall yeah. Will. Yeah. He, he now lives in San Diego and works for the program full time. He's on his own, he's got his own apartment and he's been with uh, Options for All for, you know, that's my partner down in San Diego. Okay. And he's been there for almost four years now. Making a living, getting insurance and and having a nice life for himself down there, so. Oh, and San Diego is beautiful. And he teaches, to, and yeah, how, how bad can that be, San Diego, yeah. Oh. Uh. Yeah. Um, what, uh, 
you started off, I mean, singing, acting, performing. What, what sparked you to get into what you are doing right now? Well, I was a former special ed teacher. Okay. So it was always in my heart and years. And when I taught, I used to teach through theatrics. I had this theory that if kids can watch TV for five hours at a time and not get bored, if you could make your lesson plan mm -hmm. like, a, uh, like a TV show and make it dramatic and make it fun, you're gonna, you're gonna keep their attention. And, and that's what I did, I performed my lesson plans. You know, but after a while doing that every day, coming up with a lesson plan, and I taught in an orphanage for children. Yeah. But I use theatrics, and it was not unlike when you see, uh, uh, oh God, uh, the big Broadway show, the, uh, the, uh, Hamilton. Right. That's a history lesson when you look at it. Yeah, yeah. You learn so much from watching, watching that in the history. So it was kind of like that feel would sing, do a little dance, do whatever, and and uh, and then years. Uh, 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 then I got into to show business, singing first, then acting. But when I got on uh, the set of my first film, which was a, a movie called Sunnyside, I, you know, I saw like sixty people, you know, and I didn't, I didn't know, you know, I knew theater through my sisters and brothers, but I had never been on a set before, and I was intrigued by it. I, you know, I wanted to know what the grip did, what what electric was, what the craft service was and this whole team working together to make a film and it, it reminded me of like a uh, a uh, uh, high school you know that community in high school where you all work together and uh, for a common goal to graduate but in here the outcome was ma making a film but I thought wow what a cool way to make a living because usually when you think film you think producer, director, actors. There's so many other positions. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Sullivan's in now. Okay. Sullivan, hey girl. Yeah. Uh, there's all these. <laughs> okay, here we go. Oh, let's say hello. Hello, gorgeous. <laughs> oh. That's my girl, Sullivan. Oh. Um, so where was I? So, so I was intrigued by it, and I knew this is what I wanted to do. But what I found was when I, as I delved deeper into it as a producer, um, uh, I, I found that it was the process of the making the film that I really liked. I love the prep. I love the casting. I like to love the breaking down of the skip, script, the budgeting, the scheduling. Having all these people working together as a team and I thought, wow, what a great way to teach. Mm. And uh, after years of, of producing and directing and, and uh, towards the end of, well, I shouldn't say the end of my directing career because I just directed Carol the Bells. Yeah. Came out of retirement for that. But um, I thought to myself, I'm getting folks, you know, PAs out of top colleges that don't know their way around the set. I go, wouldn't it be cool if they can learn the way that I learned how to make film? So uh, uh, so I, I was starting, I, that's when I was thinking of inclusion films. And the idea was that when I make a feature film, mm -hmm. I take a small group of 10, 15 folks and they become a part of the whole process from the very beginning all the way through post-production the way I learned, and I learned by making mistakes. Right. Uh, I, I, you know, I mean, uh, it, it was, you know, from my first film, which was about, you know, $300,000, I think we made it for, you know, up to, you know, a million and a half to two million, the process was the same. So I had this idea to do it. And when I, when I uh, uh, First, uh, uh, I did this article. My, my daughter was doing a film festival at Chaminade High School in the Valley. Yeah. And at that time, I was doing classes for neurotypical kids, you know, 
acting classes. A friend of mine was doing it. It was called the entertainment experience. And I saw, uh, I saw what he was doing. And again, I was making two films a year and, and I was trying to put together those later films to do this, what I call the practical film uh, uh, workshop. Right. So um, what had happened was there was an article written and it was about uh, uh, the film festival. I said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do, Rachel. I'm going to give you uh, camps to give away. I'll give you classes to give you away, programs, and I'll get you some publicity. Yeah. And in that article, it mentioned uh, that I was a former special ed teacher. So two parents with uh, children with autism had approached me and said, would you uh, be interested in, uh, or not interested, but would you let special needs kids come to your program? I said, absolutely. I said, we have the space. So we started opening up the door to kids on the spectrum and Down syndrome coming. And this was back in 2003, 2000, I think it was 2003. So you so, have the program and then open it up to kids yeah, on the special needs, but it wasn't inclusion films at that time. Okay. But in the article, that's when it met, you know, it I talked about the practical film workshop, what I was leaning towards, but it wasn't for special needs kids. It was for everybody because I believe everybody's the same. Hence, inclusion films. Yeah. Um, but uh, so, uh, uh, and then one of the parents uh, uh, had approached me and said, can anybody submit a film to the film festival? And I said, yeah. I said, if, they, if, they, uh, if they're in high school, mm -hmm. uh, that's the prerequisite. And she said, well, I have a son with autism that wants to uh, submit a film. And I said, okay, well, what's, what's the film about? Uh, she said, what it's like to be autistic from an autistic kid's point of view. I said, that's really cool. So um, I met him. I, oh, I said, well, send me the film and I'll give it to, to Rachel over at the festival. And she said, well, he doesn't have make a film. Well, I said, well, that's a problem. You know, <laughs> right. so, well. so I met him and after meeting him, I just really liked the project. And he wasn't, I mean, he was into it, but I think the mother was a little more into it than, mm -hmm. than he was. But after listening to it, I said, all right, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you a cameraman. I'll give you an editor and I'll mentor you in the making of it. Oh, that's great. And this little 10 minute film. And as soon as he knew he was going to make the film, because somebody believed in him, yeah. you know, it started, well, now I want to become a filmmaker. So, so we made this short film and, uh, uh, oh God, what was the, uh, uh, the PBS show? Um, oh, it, it was a big PBS show. It was uh, California Connected. They did a piece on it. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, the Daily News wrote a piece on it. And it got such an overwhelming response. They want to know about this kid with autism right. who was making the film. but. We interviewed parents. I said, you have to do all the work. You got to line them up. You do the interviews and I'll mentor you. So it started coming out really, I mean, it was really interesting. So uh, the night of this event, 500 people showed up. The ABC News came down and covered it. And all of a sudden, this little film was, you know, like a big deal. And the the Daily News got such an overwhelming response from Italy, from Ireland. We had people from Ireland at the screening. We were expecting 50 and 500 people showed up. And uh, from there, I started getting requests because they knew I was doing camps too. Right. Could you come and teach us to do it? And that's how the camps started. Right. And what happened with the camps when I started doing the camps, I really, because I never wanted to do the program without doing it with a feature. I right. It was really important because I wanted to be able to hire people, train them, then hire them. So um, it was always on the back burner until I had a feature to do it with. Then what happened with the camps, you know, and I said, it's the same process, whether it's 10 minutes whether it's five minutes, whether it's 30 minutes, whether it's a feature, 
it's a longer process, mm -hmm. but the process is where the education takes place. Mm -hmm. It's the communication, it's the collaboration, it's those soft skills that you need to go out into the workplace. Those are applicable anyway, whether you're gonna be a filmmaker or not, it's just a fun way to learn them. Yeah. You know, all of a sudden you're gaining confidence. You're gaining, you're a part of something that you can see. Even with theater, you're a part of something that you can see and you perform it, you have an audience. With a film, that's there forever. You know, and you know, that that's when uh, uh, I started thinking, well, we can do this. And the regional center, uh, uh, um, Lannerman, uh, in a meeting one time, they were asking, uh, and this was, uh, we were looking to like can't get camps funded in acting classes. Yeah. Uh, your group, I think was already doing it. So I had had a studio out in the Valley and, uh, What was your first studio? It was in Tarzana. It was, oh, Tarzana. it was in Tarzana. I built out a whole studio with a theater and everything wow. and a sound stage and the whole thing. Wow. So, so, and uh, Burbank came after that. What's that? Urban, when came you, after that, yeah. So what had happened in a meeting with the regional center, they said, we're looking for something for uh, this, this tsunami of young folks with autism that are coming into the workplace and they've got nothing. Mm. They got nothing. Is there anything? And I pitched them the practical film workshop, which was inclusion in films. Right. And they loved it and wanted me to do it in the worst way. But in the beginning, I didn't want to pull the trigger on it because I needed a feature to do it. And I did a feature in that time period, like in 2006, called Final Move. But it wasn't enough time to put together the whole thing. Because, right. you know, when features come, boom, it's like that. So after doing the camps in 2006, I said, you know what? This can happen. And we did a 2007, we did a pilot. Yeah. And it was like with about 10, 15, uh, actually, uh, um, a Gail Williamson's son uh, Blair. With, with Blair was in the program. And we came up with this script. Uh, it was called Sweet 16. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. With, with the, the, uh, were you, was that, because I don't know if I had met you yet. You did Spud. I did Spud. That was after Spud, right? No, I mean, no, before Spud. Before. Yeah. So we did this, you know, we did the pilot and the, it, it went really, really well, uh, yeah. the pilot. And um, uh, they pulled the trigger and then we were there, you know, we, that's when we opened up in, in Burbank. That's so interesting. I see, I thought that inclusion films had been going on for years before I even started Make the Biz, but... I just, you know, I started teaching at the Media Access Office around 2000. Yeah, uh, and I had done, uh, uh, before then, I had done, you know, I think I hosted Media Access. Yeah, I remember I watching. Filled in, I filled in the last minute and presented a couple of times, too. But that was like 2000, that was about 2003, 2004. I think that and was, was the doing, we were We were doing classes at the Entertainment Experience at that time. So. I love it. Yeah, and, and another thing I want to thank you for is is inviting me to cast for you. Yes, with you. Yeah, we did, yeah. and then we did more projects, right? We did the uh, that tool. Uh, remember the tool that you cast for me? The uh, uh, it was a a promo. Okay. And then, uh, that other one that's become quite a big hit was the. Uh, the safety video, the uh, officers. Um, oh, right. Yeah. You know, I I do work and I forget about it. <laughs> I know, know, you forget about that. Uh, but know. I remember, uh, you know, Spud was a joy. Uh, yeah, that was a fun film to make. And then to, and then, and then calling, you know, are you calling me up and say, hey, I have this feature we're doing with, uh, you know, Car it called Carol the Bells and it was... And I was like, ah, and then he says, come on. But, and I, I, the thing is we, I feel that we have such a, a good working relationship 
it's so nice to be able to work with people that you feel comfortable with, artistic I, I with. I think we, we work so well together that we have heart attacks together. Yes. <laughs> oh my God. And the same, okay. I call it a heart healing, by the way. A heart healing, yes. Because it sounds much more. Yeah. <laughs> but can you, uh, that, that is like sort of like, sort of doo -doo -doo -doo, that no, not no, just no. i mean the same day the same day same not day. the same day of like five years oh. same day probably yeah. the same time too uh well i what i wouldn't have, i shouldn't have done this but i was on the road up in sacramento right and uh the funny thing is i would uh, do you know who lubis morrow is I should. Lucas Morrow uh, started the Mind Institute, mm. which is one of the the biggest uh, research for of the brain for autism. Oh. It was on the cover of Time magazine. It was really good. He is a heart specialist, one of the most renowned in the world. I'm having lunch with him. Yeah. And I'm something's not right. And I I was going to ask him, but I said, "Well, you were having lunch. I don't want to talk." shop <laughs> right but from that i knew where to go because we we had lunch right near the hospital that i went to i think it's called mercy hospital up in and uh that that night i was my jaw was feeling a little weird and and tingly and something wasn't right and i got in my car and i drove i took an aspirin first but i drove over to the hospital and I stayed in overnight because they didn't get to me right away. And they did some, you know, tests. And the next morning they said, you know, there's some blockage. We need to, no damage to your heart when they, they, they found out when they went in. And they went in and, and fixed it up. And it was uh, crazy, crazy. And that was on uh, the 14th or was it the 16th of January? I think it was the 16th. Uh, yeah, I think, I think it was, I, I know it was, Jan, I know it was, Jan, yeah, we talked about it was around the same time. Because so I was, when I actually had it, I think it was just blockage. So it wasn't a full attack. It was just yeah. the symptoms, you know, I wasn't like down it. Were you out when you had your I, I actually, um, I woke up that morning and it, I felt pressure on the chest. And mm -hmm. I went, this is not acid reflux. So mm -hmm. I, I went to my roommate, I got an aspirin and she took me to the nearest hospital. And I said, can you, can you just go five minutes further to Cedars? No, no, no. If you're having a heart attack, you got to go to the nearest hospital. So I went to this hospital. They kept me three hours and sent me home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was like, and they did the test. They did the, um, the x-ray, the they take know, blood test though? and the blood yeah. test. Really? And then they sent me home. And then I, uh, I felt sicker and sicker. And I called my doctor at eight o'clock at night after I was, you know, mm -hmm. spitting up blood, God mm -hmm. forbid. And, um, and the doctor said, I want you to go to Cedars. We're going to find out what's going on with you. So went walked into seat and my fr a friend took me to Cedars. I walked in, went down. I said, I'm, I, I, you know, I don't know what's going on. They took the same three tests and 11 people came in and said, um, one guy said, uh, the doctor said, uh, Mr. Zimmerman, you've had a heart attack today. I said, what do you mean? I was in the hospital this morning. My energy was like that. Oh, man. I stayed overnight and I actually had, you know, I was hit as they call it, but I was. How, how many, how many stints do you have? I have one. Oh, one. That's all I have. Do you, you, you have one too? Just one. Yeah. And it's interesting. And when I laugh really hard, I can feel it sometimes. Really? Yeah. We, we, uh, when we go out on the road, Bar you know, Barry Pearl, right? Yeah. Yeah. Bar Barry and, and Dale who runs it, you know, we would get laughing so hard. I just remember laughing so hard and I said, just stop. I said, I said, you're killing me, man. You're, I can feel it in my stint. <laughs> and that was like the rest of the summer. My, my stint is killing me. You know, it was like the whole summer. But, oh, my God. I could feel it in my stint. But you know, that's the name of one of your books. <laughs> yeah, I can feel it in my stint. You know what, Jerry, Jerry Jewell got me when I was in the hospital. It's just amazing. Um, and we won't go too much into it, but 
Robbie oh. Benson's book. Oh. You know, he's had, he's had four open heart surgeries, really? I believe. I didn't know that. Amazing. Know that. But Joe, I always, I always consider you as my heart brother. That's right. We're heart brothers. Yes. Um, I, act, <laughs> I actually put, put out uh, to Performing Arts Studio West and Meet the Biz and the family mm -hmm. um, uh, that I was going to be interviewing you. Okay. And I, I have several questions here. Okay. Um, if it, that's okay. Um, sure. Yeah. A question from Tina Green. Uh, will you be making any more movies like Carol of the Bells soon? <clears throat> I hope so. I hope so. I've been thinking about what I can do. Um, and it'll depend on how, you know, how this film does uh, as well. But, you know, we, we're capable of making these films, so why not? Yeah. <coughs> um, uh, we have a, a, a dear uh, Alderan. Um, do you look for talent and stories outside of LA? Um, and she's. Oh, well, I, I mean, we're always looking for stuff. So. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. I mean, if you, have, if you have something, you can always submit something through. Uh, through the website because we do short stories too. I mean, that's how Spud got made. Right. The young man was had just graduated from uh, what was the school down in Orange County? Uh, got the big film school in Orange County. Uh, oh, I now <laughs> know what you mean, and I'm. It's going. Anyway, he graduated. Yeah. He was looking to, to put together a feature. Yeah. And I'm like, well, if I had the money to do a feature, I'm going to do a feature myself. And do it amongst the program. But I said, but we can support you and do a short film. And that's how that all came about. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. This one in my head and back out. Right. You know, I do that too. I always think that when I have this, a few of the cells went, I'm yeah. in shutdown now. <laughs> uh, Teresa Dierex said, why did you move uh, to Bakersfield and leave Burbank? Uh, well, I, I think we, we, we kind of combined the programs there. We're, we're talking about coming back uh, uh, to LA. Okay. But I wanted to make sure for years I've been breaking down the doors with employment and it's, it's just starting to happen now. Yeah. The, 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 if you look at the commercials, if you look at the films, it's more reflective of society. And that took years to break down. Uh, we were involved with uh, Delivering Jobs, which was a partnership between Special Olympics, Best Buddies, and Autism Speaks. And mm -hmm. basically, they created this utopian world where people with uh, different abilities just fit in. Whatever you wanted to do, you could do. And when they shot that, they approached me and said, hey, uh, actually, it was through Gail Williams. She's, she's like, you know, the matchmaker there. She's always. I, so I was talking uh, to somebody say, you don't, you don't even have to say Gail Williams and you just say Gail. It's sort of like yeah. Madonna Cher, Gail. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so she, um, she heard about this and they were looking for crew. They wanted to talk to talk and walk the walk. So uh, they called, uh, they called me and, I said, what are you looking for? And they said, well, we would like to hire a crew. I said, what do you need, Griff? Okay, you got it. Uh, we need uh, uh, a uh, uh, ga gaffer, lighting. I said, you got it. Sound, you got a camera, you got it. So before you knew it, we had six people working on a union shoot at 20th Century Fox. I love and that. I'm always looking for opportunities. I said, well, I said, are you documenting this? They said, yeah, we'll probably get some B-roll. I said, no, you have to document this. Yeah. So they hired Inclusion Films to do the behind the scenes. So from that, this great uh, shoot that was, it was really beautiful. Zach from Peanut Butter Falcon was in it and okay. uh, several other folks were in it. And, and uh, uh, I was there the whole day. So I, well, they were bringing producers over from different shows. And one of them was the, the Dr. Phil show. Wow. So from that, 
they said, we would really like to give some of your guys a shot. So they took uh, five of our students for two weeks on the Dr. Phil show and the doctor show. Mm -hmm. And they worked in the uh, building sets. They, and uh, the, the people that bring the, the, the uh, ushers that bring the uh, talent and all that. And, and it was a great experience and they were ready to hire again before this whole thing came down. Wow. Yeah. And then, then the other show, Special hired three of our guys. I love and special. That. Special is is uh, 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 right before they were talking about keeping them on longer, and then the pandemic. Came. Ryan's a, Ryan O'Connell's a powerhouse. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. So you know, you know all those folks. So the doors are opening. The yeah. doors are opening, and I have a bunch of jobs that I'm going to need to hire folks on. You know, soon after, soon we're ready to get back. We're going to be doing it again. So right. I think I think the outlook is very very strong. Right. You know, it's just a shame, but you know, maybe you know, I think people are going to be more reflective now when we go back and not think take things for granted. You know? I think I think the world, after it's been closed off so much, it's going to once we're able to go out and be safe and all that. Yeah. It's going to burst open. What's the first thing you're going to do? Oh, okay, I just um, go see my mom. Go see your mom. Well, I was hoping that was the beta question. We know that. What's the first food you <laughs> eat? What's the first uh... food that you? What's the restaurant? What deli are you going to go to? Oh, what? <laughs> oh, by the way, I've been cooking. I'm learning to cook and eat healthy. And I put my bike together on Friday, so now every day I'm I'm riding my bike. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Well, we've been doing that, uh, you know, because not only did we have our 40th anniversary this past Sunday, Wendy and I have been together 40 years. And, uh, the anniversary. and then we have our first grandchild coming the first week in June. So yeah. we have a lot to look forward to. Wow. Know? And when we get up in the morning, okay, instead of one more day in paradise, it's okay, one day closer to Jonah, my grandson. Wow. It's interesting how, it, you know, it's really about how you look at things and uh, wow, that's yeah. gorgeous. Yeah, I'm excited about it. Um, well, thank you, Joey. Thank you. Yeah. And, thank you and everybody stay safe and hopefully I'll be able to come in uh, and sit in on a class sometime. I'd like oh, to that would be a joy. It was yeah. a joy. And I, I loved uh, going to your class uh, oh, through the through the ether. Uh, yeah, the, uh, yeah, the uh, said it went quite well. Yeah. Oh, it was great. It was great. I got a quick story to tell you. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're we're doing the Zoom. Yeah. And it was with the San Diego group because we have we have six different studios, and they're all doing online. So just like you're giving questions. Yeah. So um, the moderator. Uh, uh, Mario says, uh, uh, Maria would like to ask you a question, and she'd like to know, she'd like to know about comedy. I said, okay. I said, put her up. They cut to Maria, and she's, <laughs> <laughs> I said, that's comedy. I said, you can't, I said, that is comedy. <laughs> and we couldn't wake her up. She was snoring through the whole thing. I said, that's funny. That is great. <laughs>